Now's the time to do that. All right, so the format is I'm going to share a high level overview of the website and then I'm going to show you one or two manipulatives and how it could be used and then you'll have some exploration time with those tools that I've shared. Before we get started, let's just talk about, you know, what virtual manipulatives are. Mike, I know you said you've used them before. Um, Austin, I'm not sure. What's your familiarity with virtual manipulatives? I've used them. Um, not often for me. I would prefer, you know, <laughs> hands on, but yeah. I have used them. OK, um, well, they are very similar to your concrete manipulatives that you have in your classroom that students are actually holding in their hand. The difference is obviously they're on the computer and um, the image is controlled by the user. So this is not just a picture of something on a computer screen. Students should be able to actually move the object around and change it in time consistently with the concept. So if we're using um, virtual base 10 blocks, students should be able to group 10 of them together and they should snap together as you would um, to make 10 in real life. Oftentimes, the virtual manipulatives um, do mirror the concrete manipulatives that we have in our classroom. However, sometimes they are think a little outside the box and provide context as well. And I'll share some today um, that do that as well. All of the ones that um, I'm going to share today use either Java, Flash, or HTML5 format. Ideally, what you want is the HTML5 because that works pretty much on any device. So why would anyone use these, right? Why would you take the time to pull out the computers or to go through the trouble of learning a new tech tool? Um, aside from the general research that we know already about manipulatives being um, recommended at every level of mathematics to build understanding of mental models and concepts, virtual manipulatives have some unique features that really lend themselves to impact student learning. One of the more recent studies has shown that students are more motivated and spend more time on task when they're using manipulatives. Accessibility is another big feature and unique aspect of virtual manipulatives beyond the obvious that, you know, they're accessible from the web and many of us um, have access to the web and that they're free. The other reason that they're especially accessible is because they're downloadable. Some of them are downloadable and available without the internet. So uh, I think we were talking at the very beginning about how had we been all prepared for COVID-19, right? We could have had students go home with tools and materials. And this is an instance where um, you could download the, the um, apps onto the student devices in advance. And then when they go home for an extended closure or for remote learning, they would have it on their device already. Um, in this particular season that we're all in, students can also use that download feature when they're near hotspot so they can preload that onto their device. Um, I know some schools have set up hotspots at their school location so students could come to the school, download what they need and then go back home. And I think too, even when we all are going back face to face, it's important to consider virtual manipulatives in the classroom as well because um, many of us probably don't have enough of the concrete manipulatives. Like, have you ever run out of base 10 blocks or not been able to um, do an activity because, you know, I don't have 300 pennies <laughs> for everybody right. to have their own set, right? So the great thing about virtual manipulatives is that you've got unlimited copies. Um, so it eliminates that issue of just not having enough of the physical materials as well. Probably the most distinctive feature and one of the reasons we're all here is because virtual manipulatives are reactive and they can help students reason and make sense of mathematics. Um, when students make choices and receive feedback on those choices that they've made with the virtual manipulative, that helps them make sense of those math concepts. Um, Dr. Jeremy Rochelle from Digital Promise notes that Good virtual manipulatives enable students to tell a story with the visual and linguistic common sense that they already have. And what really um, stands out to me about his quote is that students 
don't have to have technical language to use the virtual manipulative. They should be able to just use it and explore with it and use their common sense everyday language to describe what's happening on the screen. And then the teacher can integrate and fold in that technical and academic language as students are exploring. And then the final um, unique feature of virtual manipulatives is that they're inquiry based. Um, most of the quality virtual manipulatives are open ended and they're designed so that students can uncover and make sense of concepts as they would in the real world. So take a moment, look over those four unique features and consider which one might be most beneficial to your students. Like what is feature is going to be most important for your learners. Um, I, is that a question? Me, I like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was given some think time and then I was going to ask right. you to share. If you're ready to share, go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Austin. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, for me, I think it would be opportunities for reasoning and making sense. Um, mm -hmm. Just being able to see and manipulate makes a big difference. Try to, I guess, come to a conclusion on your own, especially when it's something new, something that you have not been exposed to is a little more difficult. So looking at it focuses them and makes them want to, I guess, ask questions and it makes sense. And then I love the discussion piece because one student has this, another student has that, and that lends itself to having a good discussion and helping them to, in turn, understand it and really make sense and know that this is reasonable this is not reasonable so for me I think that would be the biggest yeah that has such a huge impact on students making sense of the math right mm -hmm. being able to have those discussions thanks for sharing Austin Mike did you have something you wanted to add um yeah I guess um going into next year even if we you know have sessions in person um digital manipulatives will be the way to go. Um, <laughs> they won't be sharing physical ones. Um, I'm also wondering if there are any, um, any of these manipulatives can be shared um, to like a, a group of students can work together ah. and work collaboratively on that. Yeah. It, while, uh, while distant, like away, you mean like from their respective homes? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head how that could be addressed. I do think there's definitely some opportunities for sharing what they've done collaboratively, uh -huh. and I'll show an example of that. But let's think through that as we're going through the website. We'll see. We'll think through. Okay. Um, all right, so this slide here is just to give an overview. I'm going to give you this slide as well as another handout. But these are some places that you can go to find virtual tools to help model some of the elementary math concepts. I'm going to go over today the ones from Math Learning Center, NCTM Illuminations, and GeoGebra. Um, Mike, what grade did you say you teach? Third and fourth. Third and fourth, okay. So I will go um, through the GeoGebra site as well. It's usually for grades three and up. So I'm, I always tailor it to like who's in the room. I know Austin, you said you do all grades. So um, yep, I'll show the last three, but you will have access to the other websites as well. And each one of those websites has multiple virtual manipulatives on their site and different kinds. So we'll talk through that. So the first one I'm gonna share is the Math Learning Center. This website um, has quite a few features. It may be my favorite one. It's relatively new and there's a lot of buzz about it lately um, because the apps on this site are compatible with iPads, Androids, Androids and they are web-based. They also have some built-in sharing features which make it nice, Mike, for sharing what you've done with the virtual manipulatives with a classmate or with your teacher so that it's not just lost and you don't have to have like a snipping tool or take a screenshot. It can be done right within the one website that you're already on. So it's not something additional you have to teach students. Um, this particular website has tools that are built in with the Bridges curriculum. However, you don't have to have a Bridges curriculum to use it. The tools are pretty universal 
Um, there's no login required. Students don't need a login. They just simply go to the website. There are also teacher instructions for how to use each tool. One of the features that I really like about this website is that the virtual manipulatives on the Math Learning Center have very few constraints, which means there's lots of endless opportunities for you, the teacher. So very much like your traditional tools, these are great for um, just setting up an open-ended problem or task for students and asking them to model their thinking and reasoning. So here are two examples, and then I'm going to jump to the website so we can see these examples in action. All right, so can you all see the math learning site? Yep. All right, so this is the math learning center and I'm, I will share the link with you. I just want all attention here first. Um, so when you get to the site right underneath the introduction, they give a web uh, video that shows how to actually share the work in app, but I'm going to briefly go over it with you as well, but just know that that's there as a resource. And then underneath that, the apps are right here on this page. There's a math clock, number frames, number pieces, which are just like base 10 blocks, um, fraction tools. They have a very nice geo board, pattern shapes, and then an older one that they recently updated with partial products. Um, so right here on the site, the first one I'm going to go to is the number pieces. And I just want to show you a few things that it can do. Once you get here, there are three links for it. And all of them look the same. Like once you click on a virtual manipulative, there's three links depending on how you want to access it. We're going to do the open the web app and it takes you right to the site. If you were going to share this with students, you would just take this link up here at the top and then copy and paste it to the student. Hmm. And it'll take them right to this page so they don't have to do all those previous clicks that we just did. Um, all the tools here on this site are set up pretty much the same. There's a blue toolbar at the bottom, and then the manipulative is over here on the left. It's pretty simple. You just drag the tools out um, as you need them. Hundreds, tens, and ones. You can change the colors of them. Um, you can also unlink them. So I use the toolbar at the, the very first icon there unlinks that rod and now I can pull the rod apart. Hmm. Which is something you can't do with concrete ones, right? You can also, um, let's say, and I'm just going to pull one more out so that you can see we have 11, but I'm going to group 10 of them and use the join pieces and it will rejoin those 10 together. You also have, um, you can easily delete them. And there's a sharing tool here and then the info bar. So if you feel like it's not intuitive enough and you are not sure like what are the features, the info bar there helps um, students, teachers or parents figure out how to use the tool. So one way that your teacher might use a tool like this to help students um, model their thinking and reasoning is a real simple task with place value, having students show a number three different ways. So let's say instead of um, showing it with tens, so I might show 124 with 12 of these rods, and I'm gonna just model for you how you could turn this into a collaborative task. So if you had two students working together, they could each come up with a way to make 124. Do I have 12 of those? Six, nine, 10, 11, one more, <laughs> and then four ones. All right, so there's my 124. And I'm going to use the sharing button here to copy the image and it copies right here. I'm going to copy it and then let's say you created in advance a space for students to, oops, let me go back here. Um, you created a space for students to go ahead and share their thinking. Let me pull it up like in a Google Doc. Uh -huh. 
um, students could share in a, just a standard Google Doc, you know, and paste their picture right there. Mm -hmm. And multiple students could be working in the same document at the same time. So that could be one way that they could um, share their different solutions. Um, the one thing I like about Google Doc also, I'm not sure if you know, but there is a voice typing tool. So if you're working with younger students, they can also use this voice typing to just type in their response. So when they click on that, they can record their voice and um, share their explanation. There are also, Mike, some other tools like Screencastify and things where students could actually record their screen while they're working. OK, all right. That would require, I think, a little more work, but it could definitely be done. Um, I think this is a really good idea. I'm enjoying it, but as we're sitting here, I'm trying to think how this looks um, for all of my kids, you know, because I have the mm -hmm. K-6. Um, the older ones, I think, would it would be a very smooth transition. This is, you know, what they do. Um, but I'm wondering how this looks, not having the time in class with the kids in person to actually show them how to use this. If, you know, maybe starting with having a session with not just the kids, but even the parents walking yeah. them through. So sort of PD for everybody, because this is definitely beneficial, um, but just getting everyone comfortable with using it and not feeling so overwhelmed because that's one of the biggest things that I've heard this year thus far is how <laughs> right. well everyone is. So trying to yeah. let them know how much of a benefit this is and not a hindrance, not just one more thing that they have to do, you know? Yeah, and I think the more you can incorporate it into a task that they're already like, uh, that they're already doing so that it's not an additional assignment, right? This is the task for today's math lesson. I will say that um, I have a first grader at home who rarely, I mean, he's really only used the computer to like watch a YouTube video. He, he doesn't, you know, play video games or anything on the computer. Now he plays video games on a tablet and stuff, but not on the computer. So he doesn't have a lot of mouse control. Um, however, his teacher did create a task similar to something like this where it was a Google slide actually and she had the link for the number pieces on the side and asked them to build things with it and they um, he was surprisingly able to do it um, but I think it also depends on how much have students been using base 10 blocks in class as to can they transfer that pretty easily like oh this is a rod i know what that is right if they're not using those regularly already concretely then yes i think that's going to be even bigger more of a stretch for them um this month in june i have a teacher that's going to be sharing how she uses a tool called explain everything which records um, audio and teacher video at the same time on the teacher's computer. And so she uses that to make short videos to explain concepts to students. And I think a tool like that could be used to share with students, okay, here, here's, this is a 10, this is a one, and showing them how you drag it over um, and how you can manipulate with the tool in just a short one or two minute video for parents and students alike before they actually do a task. So hopefully that gives some um, ideas. Any other thoughts about, um, I'm gonna put the link to this in the chat box so you can explore and play around. Any other thoughts and ideas or hesitations about a tool like this? Um, no, I mean, I like that you can access it just with the link. Um... I mean, it could be uh, if we're using Google Classroom in the future or mm -hmm. another website, it could be, you know, linked into the actual class. Um, yeah. yeah. For me, um, I'm excited because we've already started looking at next year and <laughs> the things that we need to, um, I guess, send home with the kids or send to the kids in order for them to be prepared. So just having these manipulatives online will, I guess, make it a little easier to what we have to send home. This we have to send, these we can use online. So I'm excited yeah. about that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe if there are some face-to-face -face days, it's something you could introduce in class and then they could go and play with it at home. Absolutely. Um, 
and one of the things that we'll be talking about in July in the official like webinar is with any of these tools, just as you would with concrete manipulatives, you want to allow some time for students to just play with it, just to play around, see what you can build with the blocks. <laughs> um, and so that's another way to help kind of ease them in to um, using this new tool, Austin, because that's a real challenge. I see. Yeah, you can just say like build a house, then draw yourself next to it. <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Anything to just get them using it. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple minutes to just explore the site, try out some of the other tools. Um, As you're exploring, consider what you might, how you might um, use these tools with tasks that you've kind of already done with students face to face. You know, what do you already have that you could use this, these digital tools with? Mike, which one are you exploring? Uh, the vocabulary cards. Oh, OK. Um, um, wow. So it's neat how you can select um, grade level bands, like, and then the the topic in math, and you can turn them on or off. Um, so um, yeah, that could definitely be, you know, depending on what they're learning in in that unit at that time, uh, they could be customized for them. Um, Oh, um, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. I had to mute myself because <laughs> my kids were screaming outside the door. I apologize for that. That's okay. Um, I wasn't saying anything, though. I was just kind of demonstrating okay. some more on the screen because I'm recording. And so I thought some people might want to see some other tools um, oh, okay. at the same time. But that was it. I just pulled up the number frame tool to show um, how you can also use the text tool down here to write equations. And that's, mm -hmm. again, in all of the apps here on the um, Math Learning Center. So another cool tool that you can just enhance whatever students 
are showing with the tools, they can enhance it with equations and numbers and symbols as well. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next site. So the next one is the NCTM Illuminations website. Um, many of the tools on this site are actually they're all web based and they were created by um, National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Again, there's no login required, so you just share the link with students. One of the benefits to this site is that it does have teacher instructions and exploration ideas. It's not aligned to um, common core standards, though it is aligned to the NCTM um, standards. There are multiple modes. So for some of these manipulatives, they are not necessarily your traditional standard concrete manipulatives that you would use in the classroom, like a 10 frame or base 10 blocks. But it's more of an experience where students um, can test out different ideas. Um, and a lot of the manipulatives on this site as well present the concept in multiple representations at the same time. So it's very helpful for helping students make connections and to see how two different math ideas are related visually as well as um, conceptually. So for instance, the one I'm going to share is the coin box manipulative and the equivalent fractions manipulative. The equivalent fractions manipulative shows fractions in circle square and in circle format, square format, and on a number line. So you'll get to see all three representations at once. And then with counting coins, um, as you can see in the picture there, the coins are can be fitted onto a hundred chart so that students can see the value of each coin, which I think is really huge when you're thinking about um, how counting money is so abstract, right? Right. All right, so let's take a look at this site. So the NCTM Illuminations, um, there's also a search feature over here to the right that makes it helpful because they have quite a large variety of things on this site. The manipulatives are not just housed in one place. So the best way to find them is to click on interactives and then click search, mm -hmm. and then it should lead you to just all of the virtual manipulatives. So let's take a look at the coin box one. When I click on that, then there's several different modes that I was talking about, right? So students mm -hmm. can practice counting, collecting, exchanging, making change from coins, mm. um, and so forth. So this is how this site is different than the Math Learning Center, where it was more open-ended and you, the teacher, come up with the task. Some of the tasks here are already predetermined for the teacher. All right, so for this one, we're going to count the coins and I'm going to use this 100 chart down here to help me count the coins. So I can drag a 10 over, and students could, if they're familiar with the 100 chart, again, it just depends on what tools your students have had experience with before as to how helpful this is. But if they've had experience with a 100 chart before, then they can count these coins using that 100 chart, um, either by counting the individual squares or if they already know that the dime is 10, then they could just skip count as well. Huh. So let's see. And then the other great thing about um, the ones on NCTM Illuminations is that most of them give feedback if they're set up in this way where it has multiple modes. So you'll see, I'm gonna type in the answer if I can calculate this real quick, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 71. So then up here at the top, I would type in 71 and then the check button and it'll tell me. So I think this speaks a little to also about what Austin was talking about. You know, if you're working at home alone, um, students mm -hmm. can get feedback <laughs> from the computer and they don't necessarily need a parent here to um, kind of guide the learning, right? The computer is mm -hmm. gonna help check as the student is using the manipulatives. And I'm going to go back and I also want to show the equivalent fraction tool really quickly and then I'll let you explore on your own. So again, this one uses Adobe Flash and so you just have to allow it before you um, use it. And you know, I'm trying to get the screen. There we go. Um, so in this one, there's two different modes. Again, 
one mode where it provides the fraction for you. So in this case, it's given me four fifths. Um, or there's a build your own where you, the student, can actually build your own fraction by using the drag tool and clicking on the um, fractional parts to shade them in. Hmm. You've got multiple representations, a circle, a square. Um, so again, you use that slider to divide the circle and then click inside to actually shade it. So I'm going to just do automatic real quick so that you can get a sense of how this works. So they've given me two thirds, so then I might make six. And as I shade it in, you can see it actually moves on the number line as well. So students wow. can see that equivalence all at once. And just like with the other one, if I click the check button, it's going to tell me whether or not I found equivalent fractions or not. All right, so I'm going to share the link and I'd like for you to explore one of those tools. And then um, when you're done exploring, come on back and share how that might be how that tool might be helpful for your students. I hear a little pops. Which one are you using? I'm using the uh, Deep Sea Duel. <laughs> That's the, it's addition and subtraction practice, right? Uh huh. Yep. Um, you can play against the computer, and then in some, you know, potentially you could play with a, a friend and you compete. Um, so. I uh, I explored it just to see how the the, the um, playing with the friend works, and it looks like they're using the same computer. Um, um, I mean, I have students who have goals that are with 
numbers and operations. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, that one is one I think that runs a little more like a game um, and less like a virtual manipulative in that I think they just they click the bubbles right to subtract the ones. Yeah. So try um there's also a five frame and a 10 frame while it does focus more on addition and subitizing um i think it works more like a virtual manipulative in that students actually get to change what the picture looks like by dragging the um counters over to the 10 frame okay um and just for the purpose of see um i searched for it by going to k2 but i'll just pull up the five frame here on my screen too for those that are watching the recording okay. um, all right oh but yeah feel free to pull it up on your own too yeah uh oh it's having a little How okay many squares are empty? so in this one students um they can either type the number or they can click it down here in the bottom for how many they can build. One circles to the frame. So they can um one circles to the frame. Slide the, the counters over to show different Two, quantities. Three. Circle to the frame. Um this is another one for circles Austin in that there's the audio support for younger students or students that maybe um, are early readers. There's a five frame and a 10 frame and then they can always Ooh, choose the different one, kinds of apple to the frame. counter that they want to use. Move one apple to the frame. Move one apple to the frame. All right. Um, any additional thoughts you want to add on to or things you noticed? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, there's a lot to it. Uh, <laughs> Explore. <laughs> yeah. There are, and hopefully it's not too overwhelming. The goal is just to give you all the info and then um, yeah. You can choose what kind of, you know, suits your need best and explore deeper for the ones that you'd like. And yeah. again, there'll be a, another session that's more in depth at the um, in the summer. So the last site I'm going to share is GeoGebra. Um, this one is very different than the other websites because a lot of the manipulatives on here are created by teachers. And there's just a very wide range of activities. Also, this site is usually used more at the middle and high school level. However, I did find some materials that were appropriate for grades three and up. And so I do want to share it because it's one of the less frequently known and used tools out there. And there's some good stuff on there. Um, there are a lot of video tutorials on YouTube about GeoGebra and how to use and different teachers have even done um, videos to show how to use the tool that you could just easily pull one another teacher's intro video and mm. share with your students to use the task. So again, no account required. However, if you do have an account, then you can save resources and so forth. But um, you don't have to have an account to use this website. In particular, for elementary students, the thing I like about this site is that it provides students with feed feedback and cueing to kind of frame their learning. So as we were talking earlier with the NCTM Illumination site, it's really helpful in this season for students um, that are learning at home without someone there to provide feedback, that the computer is able to do that in some ways to um, guide the student learning. So. The one I'm going to show today is about adding fractions and students get feedback um, and are kind of prevented in some ways of getting a wrong answer. So it guides them, but it, it's not step by step directions. 
So the inquiry part is still there because the students have to explore a little bit to figure it out. So let's take a look. Here's the GeoGebra site. Um, to find the tools, you just go along the left hand side to the resources tab. And this graphic shows up that is interactive and you can either type the resource that you're looking for. So I can type in adding fractions or I could click on this interactive graphic and go to math. Let's see if I go to arithmetic, then the graphic changes and I could select fractions here. Mm -hmm. And then down below all of the fraction tools are here and there's just I mean hundreds of things again a lot of it is geared towards middle and high school however there's quite enough here too for elementary students in grades three and up so we're going to look just at this fraction edition one and it gives students a problem or students can type in their own problem so if you've got students that are practicing or doing a worksheet, an independent practice, they could use their worksheet along with this tool to help model the problems. Or they could just come and get additional practice with the problems that it generates. So let's just see, it's given me two thirds and one fourth. I click the add button and it shows me how those two fractions are gonna combine. And then I have to use these, let me try and zoom out here. Uh, Um, so then I use the expand tool to find equivalent fractions. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's changing as I'm selecting the plus and minus button. So students can see, oh, well, I've got eighths now, but that's not equivalent to the same size pieces as the twelfths. So I'm going to keep going until I find twelfths. Once I found 12, you'll notice this little box pops up on the side before it wasn't there. So it only pops up when you found equivalent fractions. Then when they click on that, it shows the two um, new fractions and then students could solve on their own and then check or just click the check button and find the sum. So again, it's much more guided than the other tools we've looked at. And it's really going to depend on what your learning goal is and what the student needs as to whether you use something like this versus the equivalent fraction tool on NCTM Illuminations or the fraction strips on the Math Learning Center. So you've just got a lot of options to kind of work with. Let me yeah. put this link in chat. I want you to go ahead and try a couple of problems with the GeoGebra Fraction Edition tool. And then we'll come back and discuss. OK.
So you can always take a task like this and extend it by having students create a set of procedures for how to add fractions or explain what's happening at each step to kind of assess their understanding to make sure that they're not just clicking through the steps. Um, mm -hmm. So again, the opportunities are endless. It just depends on what your learning goal is and how you structure the activity. OK. I could see how I could use this uh, for instruction also demonstrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially yeah. in a remote environment, right? Where you you don't have your whiteboard or your mm -hmm. manipulatives in front of you to share with students. This would be a good one to model problems for students with. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't allow improper fractions. I think that's a limitation of that one. Yeah, maybe. And you know Small. what? You could always search to see um, if there are other tools there. Again, there's hundreds, probably thousands of tools created mm -hmm. by teachers. So if you typed in improper fractions, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a separate tool that will <laughs> model <laughs> the improper fractions for you. Um, all right, so let's just wrap up with a little discussion. Um, feel free to use the questions on the screen, or if you want to just share what's currently on your mind after experiencing these websites, that's fine too. Just want to get some feedback on um, how maybe this was useful for you or what you might do with this information next. Uh, well, I'm definitely sharing it with um, the rest of my department and uh, with the technology uh, department as well for next year. Um, Did anything I, I, pique I, your interest? Do you have a preference for one of the sites? <laughs> Um, I, I mean, at first, I think maybe the first site is clearer, um, mm -hmm. but I, I really don't know enough about the three of them yet, um, to have like a preference. Um, I'm interested in geo, geogebra to, I'm curious, like how I could make a manipulative using using it i'm not sure, I'm sure how, how the process, the process is, is for creating, creating this like is there like a built-in yeah once you create an account there's um some built-in like um geometry tools there's uh -huh. some geometry calculators there's a whole range of things on this site i go into a little more depth in the secondary manipulatives one but um you can create things um there's all sorts of teachers that just create their own. I don't know how much work goes into actually creating your own. I would assume that you need to have a little bit of computer programming type knowledge, but it can't be too difficult because there's hundreds and thousands of them on there. <laughs> yeah. That could be even like, depending on how, how easy it is or how, whatever, um, for, uh, for students, it could be, that could be a project maybe for, um, higher grades. Yes, I do know at the secondary level, some teachers do use the tool in that way, particularly in geometry classes, and they have them create proofs or um, models. Awesome. All right, well, let's wrap up. I'm a few minutes over 1130. Let me tell you about some upcoming opportunities. Um, in June, each Friday, teachers will be featured sharing some tools that they're using remotely to teach mathematics. Um, I will send this slide out at the end as well. So if you'd like to register for one of these sessions, feel free. If you attend two, then you get a professional learning credit. And um, yeah, so that's what's coming up. I am also going to put a link in chat for a um, survey, and I'll send that out via email as well so that you can provide some feedback on what you'd like to see addressed in future sessions. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm curious about the other sessions that you had this month. Um, yes. Are those videos available? I do have videos of those. Um, I have, I recorded second, sim similar format of virtual manipulatives, but for secondary. Um, uh -huh. 
and it also features some different websites that are not um, that were not featured in the elementary one. GeoGebra is on there, but the other two are different. Um, and then we also had one on Google and Padlet, supporting students' reasoning and sense making skills, being able to collaborate with Google and Padlet as well. I like um, that one. So yeah, how about I send over the link to the Google Drive and then if you you can just peruse through what's there and if you'd like to see something you like, you can watch it at your oh, leisure. Professional you. learning on demand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you don't have